Hi, this is John with SysEng Quick. Today I'll show you how to install Gen2 Linux with SystemD rather than OpenRC as the init system. So the first thing you're going to need is a live CD to boot into to bootstrap the Gen2 install. And I'm going to use the Arch Linux installer. So we'll go to archlinux.org and on this page go to download and then either use the torrent links or get it from one of the HTTP mirrors. Once you have that, you can go ahead and boot that up. So I'll go ahead and start that. When it comes up to Arch Linux, just choose the first option, Boot Arch Linux. All right, we'll want to make sure that we have internet access. So let me ping Google real quick. Yep, looks good. So I know what my IP address is. I'm going to set the password so that I can SSH into here and be able to copy and paste things from PuTTY. So I'll go ahead and start the SSHD server. And now we'll just go ahead and log into that. All right, now that I've got my PuTTY session open, the first thing I want to do is partition the drive. And I'm going to use Parted to do that. We're going to first set the partition label to be a DOS partition label. We're going to make two partitions, both primary, the first one being a 500 meg boot partition, the second one taking up the rest of the disk and being an LVM partition. Now we'll go ahead and create the LVM. So create the physical volume, create a volume group named Gen2 on that volume. Then we'll go ahead and make four logical volumes, a 2 gig temp, a 4 gig swap, a 4 gig var log, and the rest of the space for the root volume. Now we can go ahead and partition those. Sorry, I mean format those. So we're going to use ext4 on all of the regular partitions and then swap on the swap partition. So dev sda1 is our boot, then we've got root, var log, and temp, and then find the swap partition, and we've turned swap on as well. So now let's go ahead and mount those partitions. To do that, we're going to use the mount command. Mounting the root partition under mount, we'll go in there. We'll make some mount points for boot, temp, and var log. We will go ahead and mount the boot partition, the var log partition, and temp. And finally, we'll chmod 1777 to mount temp because you need that on a temp file system. The next step is to go ahead and get the stage 3 for Gen2. So I'm downloading the digest file and the stage 3 tar bzip. So if you go to gen2.org, click on downloads and go to mirrors, you can find a mirror near you. I used one from IU because I'm pretty close to them. All right, now that we have that, we will check to see what the SHA-512 sum is. So I'm looking for the SHA-512 sum in the digest file, and we'll look for the stage three option, and then we'll use OpenSSL to check what it's gonna be, and yes, they appear to match, so I can be pretty confident that this is the correct file. We'll go ahead and extract that, tar xpf, x for extract, p for preserve permissions, f for the file, and then we will include all the extra attributes, that's usually ACLs, and the numeric owner is going to keep the same group IDs and user IDs in the tar file rather than match them to whatever it finds in Etsy password or Etsy group. Because if they did that and they didn't match, it would mess up your new system. So you want to make sure you use numeric owner here. All right, now that that's taken care of, we won't need those files anymore, so I'll go ahead and delete them. Now we will go ahead and set up the Portage rsync repo. We'll do that by making a directory for repos.conf, and we'll go ahead and copy the default Gen2 repository. Now we're going to enter the systemd namespace. To do that, we'll have to log in, so I'm going to erase the root password, and then we will go ahead and use systemd nspawn, which pretty much logs us right into a system in a little container. It's pretty handy, although we can't do everything from in here, but a few things we can do, and it's very helpful because systemd has a lot of helper programs to configure things, which are hard to set up any other way. 
So the first thing we'll do is go figure out what locales are available. So I'm in the US and I speak English, so I'm going to use these two locales. So I'm going to add those to the Etsy locale.gen file. And then we'll run the locale gen program to generate our locales. Now we'll check again to see what locales are available with locale control. Again, I'm in the US, so I'm seeing these three. So I'm going to use the English US UTF-8 locale. Now we'll check for key maps. I'm looking in the US again, so I see a US key map. That's probably pretty good, so we'll go ahead and use that. Next, we're going to set the host name. My host name is going to be Gentoo System D, and my domain name will be local domain, which we'll set up in Etsy hosts. Finally, we're going to look for the time zones. So rather than uh, US, it uses America in this case. So time, date, control, list, time zones. And if you don't grip out for America, you'll find all the time zones. So look for one that's close to you. So I am near Indianapolis, so I'll choose that one. And I'm going to set it to use NTP. Now we're going to go ahead and leave this namespace by running the power off command. It won't actually power off because, like I said, we were in a container, not the actual system. All right, so now we're going to use the traditional CH root to go ahead and enter our system normally. So we need to mount a few file systems, the proc, dev, and sys. I've tried using the arch ch root command, but for some reason, things don't quite work in there. There must be something that it's not doing quite the same way as I'm doing here. I didn't go investigate that, so I'm just going to go ahead and mount those and use the regular ch root commands. So we'll ch root into mount, we'll source etsy profile to get our path all set up, and we'll set up ps1 so we know we're in a ch root. The first thing we need to do now is to get a recent copy of the Portage database. So we're going to use emerge-webrsync to get that. It will download a recent copy. In my case, it's yesterday's copy. It will make sure that it has the digest OK. And it's going to go ahead and extract that to user Portage. This next step is optional, but if you want the most up-to-date repo, you can run emerge-sync, and it will go ahead and update everything to the very latest package database. All right, it may tell you that an update to port is available. If it is, you should probably go ahead and emerge that. Now we've got that, we can go ahead and configure portage. I'm going to go ahead and add makeops j4 to our make configuration and I'm going to use device mapper in our use flags and march equals native in the C flags and C++ flags. So if we cat at C portage make.conf, you see a change I made was right in here and right here I got rid of the bin the bin dist flag and I added the make ops right there. Now we'll go ahead and update Etsy FS tab. So I'm going to use um, SDA1 is boot, dev gen2 root is the root partition, var log is var log, and temp is temp with the swap being the swap partition. All pretty standard stuff there. This next step is optional, but you can go ahead and update all your packages with new use flags and for the latest version. I'll go ahead and see what it's going to do here. It looks like all we're doing is updating a few packages and removing the bin disk flag from a couple of them. I'm going to go ahead and not do that right now, but it may be a good idea to do that at least, if not during the install, definitely later. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and emerge all the packages we're going to need. So that's Gen2 Sources, LVM2, Linux Firmware, Gen Kernel Next, Crony, MLocate, R syslog and grub. All right, now that all of our system packages have been configured, let's go ahead and make sure that we enable the R syslog and crony service. So the next step is to configure the network. I'm going to go ahead and set up uh, ETH0 to get its IP from DHCP. So you can see I'm using ETH0 even though my network card is ENP0S3. I've noticed an issue with VirtualBox and maybe other systems as well where SystemD NetworkD is started before the network device gets renamed. 
I don't seem to have a solution for this yet other than using the default name of ETH0, which will prevent it from being renamed. So that's fine, it'll work on this, but uh, on my other system, I use ENP0S3, it works just fine. So try ETH0, try your real network name, whatever it's gonna be, uh, one of them should work. Now we'll make sure that we enable systemd network D. We will link resolve.com to etsyresolve.com so that we can use the systemd resolve D service. Now I'm going to configure and compile the kernel. So I'm going to edit the gen kernel file. We're going to make sure that LVM is yes. The make options are dash J4 and UDEV is set to yes. So if we look into etcgenkernel.conf, you'll see that we do have LVM set to yes, and we've got make ops equal J4 up here, and we've got udev equals yes. Those are options I want to make sure exist in our generic kernel configuration. So now we can run genkernel dash dash menu config all, and this will go ahead and set up our kernel configuration. We need to enter Gen2 Linux, support for net systems and turn on system D. You can configure it further if you want, but I'm going to leave all the other options like it is for now. All right, now that the kernel has been compiled, we're going to go ahead and configure grub. We're going to need to make sure that the init system is system D and we're going to have LVM as our grub command Linux parameters. Then we're going to grub install that to dev SDA and we're going to make the grub configuration. Ignore all these errors, they don't really mean anything. We can set a password now for the root user and we can go ahead and if you want you can make your own user. I'm going to go ahead and make the sysng user. Alright, now we exit and reboot. And that's pretty much all there is to setting up Gentoo with Systemd. Thanks for watching. See you next time.